my years of my teaching and practice time, I was always associated with the students and instead of my legal practice work, I have more enjoyed the teaching in my life. So, if somebody asks me, sir, whether you are a teacher or a lawyer, or which profession you like most, then of these two, I would have easily spoken that yes, I want to become a teacher first and then a lawyer. Friends, on this occasion, I must thank the institution, the director, and the office bearers of this prestigious institution, Dr. Rohini Maram, Dr. Mandana Maram, and Teja Sri Maram. I am really happy that one of us, that is one of our advocates family, speaks so nice English. I am very happy by your uh, speech in the introduction. Friends, I am very happy that this institute has grown in such a multiple way in few years of time. My colleagues, advocates from Pimpri Chinkwar Bar Association, for office bearers also, they have informed me that there are also past students of this law college and this institute. Therefore, considering this past, the present, I hope this institute will have a national and international stature in days to come, years to come. On this backdrop, I will call today to speak on careers in law, the definite guide. Friends, regarding legal profession, I will say few things. I will share my views with you first and then we will go to the today's topic. It is said that bias profession is a noble profession. What is nobility I have explained? It is further said that bias profession is crown profession. Your crown. However, one shall not forget that it is a very crowded profession. It is a rewarding profession as well as in today's world, it is the crowded profession or so. I warn you in the beginning, I just pass on information to you that today in India, there are 20 lakhs advocates practicing. In India, on this backdrop, in Maharashtra state, there are more than 180,000 advocates practicing. In Pune, people in a group of associations, there are more than 12,000 lawyers practicing. So it's in the crowd. And in my own family, in an advocate awards family, there are 10 awards practicing. Friends, on this backdrop, you are entering this crowded profession. No doubt, I have experienced from my 45 years of practice, it is most rewarding profession, no doubt. At the same time, it is very crowded profession. We must, on this background, understand bias profession. It is always said jokingly, a lawyer is never wasted in his life. A lawyer is never wasted in his life. If he is successful lawyer, or he is unsuccessful lawyer, let us see what happens. If he is successful lawyer, it is said, he becomes Motilal Nehru, who was lawyer of lawyers before independence. He was a lawyer of the British company and British government. So he was successful lawyer. And if there is unsuccessful lawyer, he becomes Jawaharlal Nehru. So if you are successful, you can be a good lawyer. If you are unsuccessful lawyer, if you fail in the, your profession, then also you can become prime minister of this country. You will find around from the independence, how the lawyer's approach to the social life is there. Lawyer's approach to the social life is always dynamic. You just go to the history of Indian independence. Who were the, the people? Most of them were barristers and advocates. Let us take the case of Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Vandabhai Patel, then Jawaharlal Nehru, and so on. All they were the lawyers and advocates. So they are the pathfinders in the society. 
They show but too much of wisdom to the society. People follow them. Therefore, in the lawyer's profession, there are inbuilt leadership qualities in your personality. These qualities do not develop in the run of the time. This is a crowded profession, as I have said. In my time, when I joined this profession, 45 years back, there were very few advocates practicing in Pune. At that time, when I joined the profession, there were only three or four cars lawyers were carrying and taking to the courts. Today, you will find there is no parking space around Pune courts, in the Pune court and PCMC courts. So, there is a prosperity along with this profession, no doubt, but nevertheless, you people, the new entrants, must take into consideration this room at the top. There is, there is crowd, but in this crowd, there is room at the top. At my time, I have to climb only first floor or the second floor to reach my boards. I could be successful in my own sense. However, for you people, to be successful, you have to climb 100 steps. Because first floor is already full, second floor is full like we people in the previous generation, and now third floor and fourth floor, and now you have to pass on for 50, 50th or uh, 50, uh, first floor in your life. So you must work hard to be successful in Today, I was just uh, discussing with your uh, professor uh, at a tea table in the office. He had asked me a simple question. Sir, what is the uh, secrecy of uh, your so many years putting into your advocacy and uh, your lectures? I told him, see sir, 10% wisdom and 90% sincerity, hard work is in every profession. Whether he is a teacher or whether he is an advocate, 90% is your hard work and sincerity. If I am a very intelligent person and I cannot teach on time, if I am a very intelligent person and I cannot understand what my students they require, then my wisdom, then my intelligence is useless. And therefore, it all depends in our life exactly how we apply our knowledge and therefore sincerity, dedication is of most importance. That is your intellectual abilities. Your intellectual abilities in life's profession that require on very less occasions. Your dedication is of most important. Your conference to be successful, you have to set the goal first. There shall be a road model in, in front of you, and there shall be a road map in your life. They will be successful life for you. So, fix in this early beginning, fix at this your entry in the legal profession, your goal first. Then there shall be a road map in your mind, and then you have your road model, and when you have your road map, then you can paint the canvas of your career as you please. And therefore, to be a very successful advocate, to be a successful teacher, or to be a successful professional, but you need not only study, but in addition to that, you must have these qualities inculcated and invited with you. And the event of Guru Purnima, as Narada said in the beginning, Dr. Guru Purnima said in the beginning, he said, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deva Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Parabra Tasmai Sri Guru Veda Maha. Here, let us take that Guru that is a faith in somebody's knowledge and that knowledge uh, passes on generation to generation in this way. Once Saint Kabir was asked the question. And when Saint Kabir was asked the question, uh, see Guruji, if there are two persons in the, if they are standing before you, are you are in front of two personalities, one is God and other is you, who you will prefer? And Saint Kabir has said, Guru Govinda Dhole Khade, Kati Rabu Pai, Gona Hari Guru Apne Diyo Govinda Dhatai. As such, in our lifetime, we must have faith in our Guru, we must have faith in our uh, leadership, and therefore, you must follow the two steps. The pathfinders, they have laid down their wisdom and we must have that ability to follow them. While discussing this today's subject, first let us see why for education? 
Why your parents they are sent into this very prestigious institution? Why at all you want to become a lawyer? Why at all you want to take such education? What is the purpose of the education? What is what that education being imparted in this prestigious institute of the most day you'll be getting after becoming a lawyer? After studying here, learning here for a span of five years, what will be your product? Any student, yes, he or she, after five years' time, will pass on, will wear a coat like me, will have the bands of tie and will go to the courts. What sort of personality you will be developing? And Swami Vivekananda has said, What is the purpose of the education? Why for? In a society, we want such good institutions. Why want brilliant and sincere students? Swami Vivekananda has said in one sentence. Swami Vivekananda he has said, purpose of the education is threefold. According to him, purpose is not only to make you wise. According to him, it provides for character for me and nation to me. In you, according to this Swami's version, these things are to be inculcated and invited into you. Firstly, this is your character forming and nation building. So ultimately, this education which will be imparted to you in this prestigious institution will lead you to a successful advocate and then will become a successful citizen of this country. To become successful citizen of this country, a reputed citizen of this country, what is needed is good education. And that is the purpose of education of this prestigious institution. On this background, let us come to the next aspect of law. This is the law college. What is law, friends? When I was coming and there was a heavy rain, one of your students, he accompanied me with his umbrella. By looking towards him, I asked him a question. A gentleman, are you from a uh, rural area? He said, yes sir, how do you know? I said, for 45 years, I am with students. I can scan and see any person standing in front of me. What is, what are his background? What is his background? And where from he comes? He immediately said, sir, yes, I am from rural area. He said, I told him, look, the people from rural area, they become good and successful lawyers. Of course, people from urban area like you are also becoming good lawyers and successful lawyers. But friends, ratio is big. People from rural area, they easily become and they attend the heights. Because by sitting in AC, air condition, we cannot understand the miseries and requirements of the masses. You must go to the masses first. You shall go to the rural people first and then understand the purpose of the law. Because Jewish Rastopon has said, in his Jewish friends book, Rastopon said, what is law? You'll find what is law is studied in the big books of 500 pages or 1000 pages. Rastopon, in one sentence, he describes what law is. According to Jewish Rastopon, for you people studying in the first year, I will tell you who is Rastopon. Rastopon is a jurist, a very great stature. And to understand Rasko Pound's words, even a person having LLM or PhD qualification has to read it twice his book, then we understand. Even if I start reading Rasko Pound, I have to read it twice. Such is the, the philosophy laid down by Jules Rasko Pound, whose books are, uh, uh, they are referred for uh, PhD and further education. Jules Rasko Pound, his distinct Wisdom is in one sentence. What cannot be said in 100 pages, he says in one sentence. According to Jurist Rastopal, what is law? He says, why is nothing but? Law is nothing but, it is experience by reason. Law is nothing but, it is experience by reason and to be continually applied in future for experience. It comes from experience and it adds, it enriches your experience in future. That is what law is. What was law yesterday? What is law today? And what will be law tomorrow is based on reason and experience. And this devices, 
when you come to the next aspect in law. Today, the dimensions of law are being changed. When I joined the profession 45 years back, friends, the legal profession was different. Today's legal profession is different, and tomorrow's legal profession will be different. You should be prepared to face all these challenges because it is already crowded profession. And in addition to that, nature of the profession is being changed very fast. If you want to be successful lawyers, successful advocates, successful teachers, law practitioners, then next 45 minutes will be very important for you and me. I will be explaining how to become a successful lawyer and what is required now. In my time, the requirements were different. 45 years to become a successful lawyer or teacher, our requirements were different. For you people, the parameters of the requirements have been changed and this change is very fast. The speed of the change is very great. Let us try to understand what this is. We we'll find sometimes it's horrifying. If you understand everything, then you will you'll be wonder, you'll be surprised, you'll be astonished, and you'll be perplexed that yes, whether I can stand this competition or not. And to understand this aspect, let us see in this profession what is the change. When I became advocate 45 years back, I was studying and I was having the privilege to be tutelage of my elder brother, let our sir. Under him I was studying, I was his student and I was his junior also. Then he taught me how to practice, how to teach. In my time, we had a court, the banks, the briefcase, go to the courts. Very few advocates. There was no competition for us. We are very lucky. There was no competition in the courts. In every court, five ten advocates are standing. Now you go to any courtroom, there are hundreds of advocates standing. Therefore, there is a crowd in the courts. There is crowd in the profession. To overcome this contingency, I started going to the court 45 years back. And then my senior used to tell me, look, uh, this notice is to be sent, get it typed. How we used to get it typed? Then there were typists in the courts or in our offices. Then we used to dictate him, then he used to type. Then you know how the typewriting they did work. Then there was some mistake in his typing. You have to check everything. Then we corrected that mistake in the type written form. Then there was some mistake, we corrected it. Once you corrected it, what was the next? Again, he has to type everything because this copy and paste and delete. This was not then available uh, 45 years back. Then he has to type everything. That mistake was corrected, but he corrected another mistake. Therefore, for a simple draft of notices, sometimes it took three, four, five times. And therefore, our work was less intelligent and more rigorous. We were 45 years before not required to be intelligent advocates, but laborious advocates. We have to take great labors to be a successful advocate. And then, if any case was going on before the court, then our senior used to ask us that we search on this issue. Then we have to go to All India Reporters, Maharashtra Journals, etc. And that, that was a very voluminous work. We have to just go through the books, we have to read the books, then we have to have the big bags and then put the books in the bags and to take to the courts. This was the item as well. Now, my colleagues in the office, around 10 years, uh, friend is working with me, and their job is very simple. If I ask uh, my colleague that look on this issue, I want something, I give you one day's time. We require seven days' time in my time. This boy comes within five minutes and then he works and he says, sir, there is a judgment. So now the concept has undergone a change. We require search, read the papers, read the reporters, and then have the documents. Now today it is at the, the tip of the finger for the new generation lives. This is the change. So it is very easy for you. And secondly, last couple of decades, 
as computers they are in genius it is very easy how it is easy for you copy paste copy paste in the two sides i am telling you first thing regarding typing and then something is to be changed delete that much and substitute that much this is very common but in another copy paste we are experiencing nowadays most of the or some of them some of the buyers junior buyers they copy drafts and they use the drafts without application of mind this is the inherent danger in this computer use and copy paste methods now on this premises in our case the branches of practice were fixed go to civil civil court go to criminal criminal court most of the lawyers in my time they have mixed practice civil and criminal in addition to that there are corporate courts in addition to that there are labor courts there are consumer courts there are against tribunals like maharashtra administrative tribunal nat then there is central administrative tribunal cat and there is a drt debt recovery tribunal and there is dart the debt appellate then the tribunal then in the revenue courts there is a scope for revenue practice from tahsildar deputy collector collector then commissioner and then maharashtra revenue tribunal these are three disciplines open for you in the few years now there are different openings for the legal practitioners especially as to in most of the industries in most of the builders offices there is a term called as in house lawyers because this business man business community they can offer to run after a practicing lawyer in the course practicing lawyers are little busy and therefore they are not easily available to the business man and therefore what they do is when there are pressures when there are uh, the law graduates when they employ such law graduates they give opportunities to the law graduates and then there is a work with them so you can work with such institutes as well you can practice in the courts these are first few or first uh, aspects of what you do you find in lawyer's profession it is not that traditional concept going on today there are new avenues coming up as to intellectual property laws like cyber laws if you go to the pune court friends or go to our uh, pvc court courts today or thereafter and as a, a simply general knowledge you stand in the door step if any lawyer comes he or she comes with folded hand ask a simple question sir madam in which area you are practicing then you find about 95 percent class including myself they will say uh, uh, why are you look here i am practicing in civil law i am practicing in criminal law or i am practicing in cooperative law or uh, i am practicing on the labor law and you ask a simple question sir anything about intellectual property laws anything about cyber laws you will find friends today even there are about 1200 or 12000 or 15000 lawyers in pune pune district even 10% of them are not practicing on intellectual property law side or cyber law side there is a big problem so profession is crowded which profession is crowded normal part traditional base or traditional subjects is extremely crowded in respect of new subjects exceptional subjects you will find now there is a great vacuum there is a great scope but you must be uh, in line up with these new avenues open in this connection before we going to this my main purpose was as soon as uh, dr tejasri asked me sir our principal madam desires your lecture on this issue my purpose was not to tell you whether to join civil or criminal or intellectual property laws my purpose was my object was to share with you the new dimensions of the adoptacy in days to come friends you read today's subject what is meaning of the today's subject 
करियर से इन्वॉल्व डैश पढ़ी रिटर्न डेफिनेटली वेरी गुड एंड दैट आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विथ यू दैट आई एम टू आई एम शेयरिंग विथ यू टूडे अ लॉयर ही कैन नॉट अफर्ड टू बी अ नॉर्मल लॉयर अ प्रैक्टिसिंग लॉयर बट ही मस्ट बी ई लॉयर he must be e advocate he must be technical advocate you will ask me sir how there can be e advocacy how there can be ai or artificial intelligence advocacy and yes friends in international sphere the concept is being changed in years to come all of you to be successful cannot afford to be to follow our footsteps to follow our paths you have to have your own path You have to follow. You have to find your own ways to become successful. Because hereafter, this entire field, entire life, is being dominated by artificial intelligence. You must have thorough knowledge with respect of artificial intelligence. Only those lawyers who survive, only those lawyers who survive, who are used to and having mastery over artificial intelligence, they only and they only you can be a successful lawyer. In my case, it was not necessary. In respect of that, I have learned to the great extent what is this AI and what is its utility in legal profession. Nevertheless, you must learn this artificial intelligence and its utility in our profession. I will explain in few words. You will find friends in the year 2017. In the year 2017. In the China, in China, in Hangzhou province of China, in Hangzhou port, there was first artificially made robot or machine judge. So machine judge or robot judge concept started in China in the year 2017, and you will be surprised, you will be astonished to know. But for last five years, in 15 provinces like Maharashtra, 15 parts like Maharashtra in China, there are artificially intelligent judges there working. China is the only Himalaya in the world. So beyond that part of Himalaya, there is a robot judge, which we do not know. We have not tried that robot judge to come to India. You must be aware. You must be knowing. That first artificially intelligent advocate called as Ross was a robo advocate was made, and in this robo advocate, all information was fed to the robo advocate, and you will be surprised to know that robo advocate he has given less than the lawyers are giving. So machines they will become advocates. Machines they are becoming judges. I I have wrongly said will be. It is not will be. No, it is is. so there are robo lawyers today there are robo judges today and therefore you must not only learn these books of law but in addition to that but you must learn you must learn what is artificial intelligence and its use in legal education and uh, as well legal profession to know its utility into this there is one great author That great author, his name is Suskind. He wrote a book called K I N D. Read his book. Richard Suskind has written a book. The name of the book is Future of Law. That's thirty years ahead. That author, Richard Suskind, in his book called as Future of Law, thirty years ahead. Let us see what he has said. He has said that within short time, the dimensions, parameters of legal education and legal profession will change. We are also knowing that something will change. To change is a uh, natural process. But you find in my generation, this speed of change was one generation of 35 or 40 years. In our days, there was a change. There was a change in legal education and legal profession too, but that was a generation change. Change could occur after 40 years, 30 years, etc. 
Now, the change is not 30 or 40 years, the change is 5 years and sometimes even 1 year. Every year something is changing. That was Saskatchewan has said. According to him, there is a such a change is acquiring such a very fast speed. There is another author, he has written a book. His name is John MacLeod. Jewish MacLeod, rather author MacLeod, he has written a book. The asteroid struck. The asteroid struck the earth. The asteroid has struck the legal profession. And he has said, now everything has been changed. Everything has been changed and you have to be well equipped to face this change in the society. You people, those who are having science background must be knowing that there is a always, or there has been always the change in the society. The change in the society is with the industrial revolution. Basically, the industrial revolutions they have brought change in our life. Industry 1-0, Industry 2-0, Industry 3-0, and Industry 4-0. In one sentence, I will tell you what is Industry 1-0. What was Industry 1-0? During 17th and during 18th century, there was a change, and because of this change, with the help of the water and the vapor, there was there has been the mass production. Then Next century, electricity. With the help of the electricity, mass production. And then, in the next century, there was electronics industry 3.0. And with the help of electronics, there is a great change. And industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 means, all the first three, there is a fusion thereof. Water, vapor, electronics, electricity, all put together. And because of that, now there is a great change. And now today, at international field, the international scenario, there is industry 5.0 coming up. And we people, we are at the end of industry 4.0, and you people are entering the period and the phase of industry 5.0. In Germany, there was one fair at Hanover, and there, the word industry 5.0 has been introduced. In Japan, there is the concept of society 5.0 has been introduced. You will be asking me a question, Sir, are you talking about science? Are you talking about this all industry? What is concerned with law? Friend, that is my today's subject. Because you must be here after not only uh, legal people, legal personnel, but you shall be e advocates, you shall be AI advocates. You must be artificially well equipped and best, then you can uh, be uh, facing this uh, rat race in the legal profession. There are two phrases in legal profession outstanding bias. We use the term outstanding bias. Who are outstanding bias? If you are sincere, if there is dedication, if there is hard work, if you are setting your goal, if you have your role model, if you have your roadmap, then you are a successful lawyer. This is outstanding. Explain. What is other outstanding? Outstanding. <laughs> if you do not, if you do not, if you fail to be a good lawyer, to be a dedicated lawyer, to be a hardworking lawyer, then you cannot stand the rest of this uh, lawyer's profession. You have to stand outside. Then you have to choose at this stage. Whether you want to be outstanding or outstanding lawyer, beginning is with your first year yourself. And therefore, to come to the point, I will say, while studying in your law college with the esteemed teachers here, you study well the books, the law books, but simultaneously be aware that you have to have mastery with respect of technical aspects also. This technical aspects in respect of uh, lawyer's profession we find. It is said, today the nature of every profession is being changed. How do we change? Say for instance, previously there were mass products, various companies were there. In the run of the time, they have been lost.
the Honorable Professor has sometimes to be the first in this business. Today, Uber is first. Uber is first. You will find, you will be surprised that Uber company, which is the topmost company in this transportation, they are not having, they are not having even a single car ownership. They don't, they are not owning any single car. Yet, they are the topmost transporters. This is because of change in the and therefore, friends, if you want to go ahead in this legal profession, then first you have to be uh, used to this process of artificial intelligence. You will ask me a question, sir, you have used this word artificial intelligence about 10 to 15 times. What is artificial intelligence? And what is its relevance in legal education and legal profession? I will tell you a simple illustration. It is said that highly paid and most wanted legal profession in the United States of America is legal profession. Today, what happens in India? It is said by a joke sometimes. Any parent intends to put their child, son or daughter, into education. What are the priorities? First, they want to see him or her to be a doctor. Then chartered accountant. Then IT engineer. And if something is not done, then they say that, okay, we'll take a, a admission in the law college. This scenario is being changed nowadays. And especially you find at international level, the, in the United States of America, the most rewarding, most paying profession is the legal profession. But these people, most advanced people in the country are facing these problems. Because today, if any client comes to you in Pune, then he has searched Google. He has searched various websites. He has already talked and then he comes to us for consultation. He says, sir, if you do something, if we share some information with him, he then tells us, sir, there is such information on the Google and he has got a print out there. Therefore, this scenario is being changed. You get your office. Now, before your term comes up, the clerk of the court will inform you that gentlemen, be prepared within the next five years your VC will go on and you will be connected to the court within the next five years and you will be addressing to the court by VC methods. This is not what we are imagining. This is not imaginary. This has already went into practice. So, especially in India, fortunately or unfortunately, experiment has been done during pandemic period. What happened during pandemic? During the pandemic period, two things have happened. When <coughs> most of you were online, there were no offline lectures. Physical meeting for the medical contingency, they were avoided. And therefore, there were online lectures going on through the offices of the technology called as video conferencing. Online uh, lectures in the video. Most of you have experienced that. This is a good point. What was bad point? I will, I will just remind you bad points. During last few years, Madam, there are 2 lakh and 50 thousand lawyers passed in India. And of these 2 lakhs and 50 thousand lawyers who have joined the bar during last few years, they have never attended the class hall. They have not, they have not heard any lectures in the courts, I mean in the class halls. They have learned only on the years, but my percentage is not more than 74 or 75. And now here, any person passes with 95 or 98 marks. Friends, I have just give a word of caution to you. It has been found most of the lawyers they have passed, or some of the lawyers they have passed, are not knowing even name of the sections. Leave apart the ingredients. What will happen to these 2 lakhs and 50,000 lawyers who have passed to the uh, actual classroom? So, this technology is a gift, no doubt. It is a gift, no doubt, but at the same time, you must know how to use it. And therefore, these guys, they have been uh, required to be taught. And therefore, the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to take care of such lawyers who have passed during the corona period or pandemic period, there is a new series started 
by the Mahashtra Bhat Council, unique in the India. In India, this has been started, in India, the Mahashtra Bhat Council has started a series called as Black Basic Legal Education Program. The concept of this basic legal education program initially is to talk, to teach such people who have no opportunity to attend the classrooms and to hear the teachers addressing in the law classes or the uh, class halls. So, you must understand on the background of all this that this use of technology is must and your knowledge shall be uh, so molded so that you can uh, use it in the uh, your learning process as well as in legal profession. We will ask you a question. So whether this is really, uh, there is a real apprehension that machines can surpass the human intelligence. We will certainly ask you a question. Sir, so, all right, if there are advocates coming up, there will be e advocates, there will be machine advocates, there will be robo advocates, whether they will surpass us. Is there any danger to human bias? Yes. I give two illustrations to you. Most of you who know about chess and chess game and uh, the champions in the chess. The all-time champion, we know Indian champion. Huh? But before that, there has been Gary Kasparov, most of you must be knowing. Gary Kasparov, he was all-time champion in the chess. And it was not fit at international level. Let us see. But to what level this artificial intelligence can surpass human memory? This biological memory, whether it can be surpassed by this machine in memory or not. Accordingly, there is one international uh, technical company, IBM. This IBM company has accepted this challenge. IBM company has provided for this challenge and to the machine. First, game was played between that machine and Gary Pascal. That machine learned. But learn, what is the technique Gary Pascoe uses? Game of War. And then, uh, after a couple of months, final uh, game was arranged. Series of game was arranged of six games. In the meanwhile, the engineers of IBM International, they provided for feeding of information to the machine. And then when information was fed to the machine, by IBM companies, scientists or engineers or IT engineers and when the information was provided to the machine an actual game was uh, provided for after a couple of months game was going on and not be surprised this all time world champion he was defeated consecutively in all six games machine chase robot defeated human robot in all six days. This is the machine memory. Think about it. Tomorrow night, a rich firm provides for a machine allocate. Friends you think, sir is telling very imaginary things. No friends. This is already happening. Most of the largest firms in foreign countries and that to Mumbai, in Madras, and in at Kolkata, they are providing their advocates with this technique. And if such memory is provided to the machine, all information is provided to the machine, and that machine is made your advocate, maybe not in the court, but in your office. And if, say, for instance, you have already suit on specific performance or based on any contract, already information is paid, but is specific really packed. What are sections there of what is the Indian Contract Act, what America says about it, what the Australian court says, it. all information is fed to the machine. And then the advocate, working advocate, in his own case, requires opinion. He put only one word. Immediately, arguments for and against will be coming up from the machine. So, human memory, biological memory, is being replaced, will not be, not will, has been uh, being replaced by the memory, which is a machine memory nowadays. And therefore, in this connection, uh, this machine memory uh, may be uh, dangerous also. There is another issue. In chess, what happens? It is 8 by 8, most of us know. 
There is another game. Go. So what you must be doing? There are 90 by 90s. 19 and 19. So there is a huge combination. And there was a, a champion Sigal. And this machine was, this machine's memory was challenged by Sigal. There was a game between human being and machine. That machine has defeated continuously six times to this world champion. Therefore, if these machines are defeating such human beings, in days to come, what will happen? This machine robot will be created and the machine robot will take the place of the human memory. That will be more dangerous. You will ask me a question. Separated me, there are lakhs of cases coming up. Already there are five crore cases pending in Indian courts. Then there will be 20 lakhs of cases. So we have a few cases to come. But friends, situation is not like this. There is another danger to the Indian judiciary. To, when you enter into the profession after four or five years, there is another danger standing before you. What is danger? As for international law, you will be studying in the next or next year. In international law, there are various covenants between the countries. Between you and me, there can be contract. But when two countries enter into contract, that is called as covenant. And therefore, there are international covenants, international contracts. And one of the international contracts is called as GATT, GATT. What is that? General Agreement on Trade and Traffic. This General Agreement on Trade and Traffic or GATT provides reciprocity of the business. What is reciprocity of the business? If India and China, if India and the United States of America, if India and the United Kingdom, they want to have international relations, then what should happen? It is provided if we can send our goods to them. Say for instance, we are sending grapes to them. If we are sending, say, orange from Nagpur to them, then their goods we must accept. If we send something, then we must accept their goods also. If we have, or we wish to have some trade with them, then we must accept their goods also. Likewise, likewise, now there is like you would ask for this GATT or general agreements on trade and traffic that international lawyers will be allowed to practice in Indian courts. This was already there when I was chairman of the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa. This procedure was already on. But with the Indian legal fraternity, through legal battle has stopped it. This is already coming in India, but through legal consequences, we have stopped it. In very couple of years, next couple of years, a lawyer sitting in his AC chamber in New York town will be fighting a case in Baramati Court. This is another danger we have to see. This other issue we have to see. So there can be any international dispute, and in respect of any international dispute, the case is set for instance, one party is in Washington or say New York, other party is saying our came or say at Pimpri. What will happen? That why of the uh, very huge company in New York City, they will be hiring Indian buyers, they will charge very huge fees, and they will pay very uh, less amount to the Indian buyers, and case will be conducted at Pimpri Chitra Court or say Kerr Court or say Court. So this is another major coming up. So friends, just I have to give a word of caution to you. Be prepared for these challenges. Not only passing in the there will be passing is very simple. That cannot be your aim now. In our days, we were lucky. You will be saying that sir, you are a successful person at the age of 71 years. But I would say, uh, instead of uh, successful, we were lucky. No competition. I will not say less competition. At our time, there was no competition at all. Now, in your time, there is a great competition. And to survive the great competition, only legal books or legal knowledge will be useless. You have to be, this legal knowledge which shall be and must be accompanied by the technical knowledge. In this technical knowledge, you must uh, mastermind it. You must learn. How to learn it? You find it. First, try to understand the scientific temperament. Along with it, there shall be development of the scientific temperament in the students. How to develop scientific temperament? 
It is very simple to say that develop the scientific temperament. How to develop the scientific temperament? Friends, the concept they are undergoing a great change. In our days, when I joined the bar, 45 years back, if there was a theater committee, what happened? Same IPC, same sections. When there was complaint made to the police, what happened? The police constable came to Lati in his hand, Danda in his hand. And then he come here and then he would say, where is the thing? He used to find the thing. He will catch the thing and will take him to the police station when there is a thing. What happened today? A couple of months back, there was he, he was sitting in the cabinet and there was e threat committed. If there is an e threat committed, then boys like us, the traditional boys are useless. There must be e advocates, there must be artificially intelligent advocates to face the new challenges in the legal This is the need of the time of course. So, so as to face these new problems, you have to be uh, e advocates, you have to be artificially intelligent advocates. You will ask me a question. Okay, we all understood the important they are. How to practice it in fact? As I was saying, if you go to our court and you ask, say, uh, sir, you are practicing and classified the advocates, only 5% or 10% they are practicing on artificial intelligence or say intellectual property laws or cyber laws. Very few advocates in Pune court practicing in these uh, different areas. So, my way, select in your life from this first year to fifth year, five years time, you take up various courses first. Along with the LLB course here, there must be, there may be in your uh, college cyber loss courses. If not, in some universities, you may have cyber courses. Go for cyber courses first. Take the elementary education first. And then attend various webinars on cyber loss. And then you learn about this machine learning process. This artificial intelligence, it consists of six phases. I will not take you to the six phases of how to provide for artificial intelligence. But this machine learning is the process whereby there has to be feeding of the information. And so as to provide for feeding of the information and selection of the information is a job to be learned by uh, joining any such cyber law courses, intellectual property law courses. The, the scenario has been changed. Previous to what the richest person trained? Richest person could be like Amani or Adani. Like Tata or Mirla. And what was the richness? They are huge properties. They are huge bungalows. They are huge factories. They are huge establishment. And therefore, there are, uh, uh, say, rich wealth in there. What is today's wealth? Today's wealth is not in buildings. Today's wealth is not friends in respect of factories and industries. You know Mark Zuberba. Most of you are e friendly people. Most of you use the uh, mobiles, laptops. Why are you using mobiles and laptops? Mark Zuberba and uh, these people, they are uh, most rich people rather than Mumbai and Adani. Their richness is where? In factory? In industry? No. Small Facebook, which is a feature of your mobile, he is the richest person in the world. So, these new methods of richness also change. Not only knowledge has changed. Knowledge or every person must be or must have storehouse of knowledge. That is being changed. So also the forms of the property are being changed. And you must be prepared to accept these new forms of property too. These new forms of property also. So friends. So friends, in this entire scenario, we must uh, first make up a mind and you must be knowing that after five years time you want to become you must become e advocate so this college this is team institution your that logo that i have passed my LLP or LLM from this institution no doubt will add to your personality in addition to that you must learn as to this new techniques and new methodology in the legal profession then you become a perfect you ask me a question sir how from this here itself I can use it. This can be a practical difficulty. How from my first year, you are telling such things about courts and judges and robo judges and robo advocates and the Ross as a advocate. You find government of India 
and the Niti Ayoga India, they have provided for absolute new change in Indian structure. The government of India in the year 2020 has provided for race, R A I S E, race 2020. With reference to this race 2020, the government of India has provided for artificial intelligence for all. You go to the portal of Niti Ayog and you find there is a version AI for all. So in India too, there is use of artificial intelligence at the only place. You find this artificial intelligence, but you go to the lawyer. There is one illustration you must have read in the newspapers. There was one surgery urgently to be carried out in Ahmedabad town. Then there was an urgent coronary surgery or a heart surgery was to be carried out at Ahmedabad town or hospital. But unfortunately, that expert doctor, he was about say 40 kilometers away from the city. And there was no time. There was exigency, there was contingency, there was emergency. And therefore, all there were arrangement made. There was a robo doctor, there was a robo surgeon in that cardiac hospital. And that human doctor, who was 40 kilometers away, he gave instructions, daily instructions to this robo surgeon. And robo surgeon carried out the heart surgery. If robo surgeon can carry out the heart surgery, why not the advocacy? If he can become a doctor, why not the advocate? You find in Thane near Pune, in hotels at Thane near Mumbai or Pune, there was experiment being carried out. There was a robot waiter appointed. And if you go to the hotel and see there, robot will come. You ask, yes sir, why will not end here? Yes sir, looking to you, he will say, yes sir. But if there is a small child, say 5 or 10 years old, he will say, yes master. If she is a girl, she will say, yes miss. If there is a grown up lady, he will say, yes ma'am. So Robo knows, madam, miss, master and mister. So Robo judge will not only uh, accept your order, will address you. And then we will uh, take order, we will go to the kitchen. We we'll place the order, we we'll take the goods, we we'll come to you, serve the food, and then we is being paid. And if it is given, we'll say thank you, sir, thank you. This is the present technique. You we'll find very recently the World Economic Foreign Institute. I think you are not bored with this technical details. If you say, I will stop. If you say, I will continue in three minutes. Okay. Continue. Continue. So, very recently, there is a forum at the world level called as the World Economic Forum. How change is very fast, how it is horrifying, how it is dangerous, and within a couple of years, when you become why after five years, before that, everything will be changed. I am saying rather more five years. It may not require even five years' time. Everything will be changed. Our teaching methods will also be changed. So, advocacy will be changed. So, what happens? The World Economic Forum, have, they have published the report in the year 2018 and 2019. They have said that hereafter, 75% people must acquire reskilling of their knowledge, otherwise they will be outdated. This is not for the future. Two years before, the World Institute of Reputation has said that we must reskill ourselves, we must relearn the things, and then only we can compete in the international uh, sphere. Otherwise, we will be outdated advocates, we will be outdated persons. This is the need of the time in days to come. We shall be prepared to uh, compete in the international field. This is the new scenario. In fact, I was intended to tell you that there are about 25 avenues open in the legal profession. But that avenues will come to you as and when you become lawyer. But this avenue you must have common to all disciplines. Either you want to become civil or criminal, etc. But common is artificial intelligence. Common is e-advocacy. And common is as to your scientific temperament to be developed. 
So along with this now, you must be knowing in the examinations like MPSC, MPSC, etc. To become IPS or to become IS or to become deputy collector at the uh, state level. Now in their curricula, in their curricula or the general study, the uh, questions are being set as to artificial intelligence. Why not they take the examination? Go to any your uh, you any student. And you ask your student who is a MPSC or a UPSC candidate and then see or he will tell you, yes, in their syllabus now, this artificial intelligence is being included. So, uh, to face the new challenges, our administrators, they must be e-friendly, e they must be e-savvy. And that will be fine. In most of the course, in, when we joined bar, before 45 years back, there was a club. When there was a chief examination, when there was a cross examination, everything was written by hand. Thereafter, that handwriting was replaced by typist. And today, the laptops. The high court has provided your judge in the course with the laptop today. And in days to come, this should be changed. This should be changed because friends, when they never, uh, and visiting almost all bar association in Maharashtra. There are 350 bar associations in Maharashtra. I have visited about 300 bar associations in Maharashtra. And I will find, you find, when I have to come to the lecture, I have to prepare myself. As your teachers, they are making homework. I too, at this age, I make my homework. To be perfect, don't believe only in your memory. You must believe in your homework. I do homework at this age. And when I was just coming here, in my car now, there is a note on this today's subject. Previously, what? Five years before, what I have to do? I have to call myself or my typist in the office. On computer, he will write, type something and then he will give me a print of it. Today, I don't need typist. Why? Most of you know. If I put on mobile, speech, speak to this. I start dictating to my mobile. Immediately, what happens? Previously what was done, if I speak to the mobile, so there was the clip of my files. I could re-record it. I could re it. Now there is a further development. What is further development? You people know more than me. Now I speak and that is right. Only I have to join my mobile to my PC and get a uh, print out there. That's all. Previously I used to it only for English. And what happened? In our life, most of the time I have to address in the Marathi, in Marathi language too. Now there is further version in the Google. What is further version? I speak in Marathi. That is typed in Marathi. And then there is a Marathi version. There is Marathi print out term. So there is no need of typist. What will happen to that typist community? What will happen to typist community? They are written. Like when I am saying, advocates will be outdated because of today the work of the typist is being eliminated. Previously, there was translation method in the economy. When the matter goes to the High Court and Supreme Court, in our uh, courts at up to district level, everything is in Marathi or most of the work is in Marathi. But when matter goes to High Court, usually judges from outside Maharashtra are coming. And when matter goes to the Apex Court or the Supreme Court of India, they usually matter is in English. So vernacular documents, they have to be transformed and translated into English. Previously at High Court and Supreme Court, what happened? There were translators. Now there is no need of translators. Job of the translator has gone. And now at the High Court and Supreme Court, now there are translating machines. You just put the Marathi version, it will be scanned and it will be translated in English. This is happening. We never thought of it. I as, I, I as a lawyer, when I had been into profession, I never thought this would happen in my lifetime. This is happening in my lifetime. Unfortunately, I think this I learned it everything. So you people must also learn this reprocessing so that we will fit with the test. Friends, with this, with the permission of the chair, I can prove. I could give you what I have got the little knowledge about this e advocacy and uh, with reference to this artificial intelligence using the legal profession. But by the way, if you go to any uh, YouTube channel and then you just put AI or artificial intelligence, you will have at least a couple of thousands of uh, recordings. Not one or two, thousands of recordings. 
to go to the YouTube channel and uh, you to go to the Sumesh Protocol of the Supreme Court of India and give us a message and then we have to further many things about Supreme Court of India, uh, about Bombay High Court. Therefore, friends, you must be used to all these processes. In this sense, uh, I am really thankful to the institution for uh, giving me this opportunity and coming here and to join uh, with you and to share what little knowledge I have about this uh, advocacy, the advocacy, and coming up artificial intelligent advocacy. With this phrase, uh, I conclude. I thank the institution, the office bearers, principal, Mara, Dr. Kajeshwari and Dr. Vandana Mara, and all the staff and the students. I am very thankful that you <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.